Number four, tender of payment or consignation. Now, if payment, if upon payment by the debtor, the creditor refuses without just cause to accept the payment, then the debtor shall be released from the responsibility of paying. By how? By consignation. So consignation is the depositing the thing or some due in court. So what the debtor will do will deposit the thing or the payment in court. Yeah? That's what you call consignation. So this consignation can also be applied when the creditor is absent or unknown or did not was not present in the place where the payment was agreed to be made. No? So he was a no-show during the payment agreed date. Also can be applied when the creditor is incapacitated to receive payment. So when is a person incapacitated? When he is uh, in prison, when he is insane, a buang ang creditor. Or when he is uh, demented. Uh, when he is imprisoned by more than six years. So that is civil interdiction. So he is incapacitated. Number three, when the creditor refuses to issue a receipt without just cause. Here, without just cause. Number four, when two or more persons claim the right to collect. So let's say, for example, the debtor died, and I mean the creditor died, one creditor, matai. Then two, two of his sons are now claiming the same right to collect. So to whom are you going to pay? So this time the debtor is. Confused, no? To whom he should pay? To son number one or son number two? So instead of paying them, the debtor can make a consignation of the thing in court. Number five, when the title of the obligation has been lost. Should be a T. It's been lost, no? So if the title of the obligation is lost, or the promissory note is lost, or the check is lost, or the bill of exchange is lost, then you will not pay. Yeah? Because if the debtor will pay and then the bill of exchange has been negotiated to another person, so it does not extinguish the obligation with the debtor. So you have to get your title of your title, the document here, the check. Okay, so that's about payment. Now we go to number two, which is the loss of the thing due. Obligation extinguished when the loss of the thing due is uh, object perishes physically. You know? Let's say, for example, uh, a Toyota Fortuner uh, plate number 111-2F was uh, promised by the obligor or debtor. Unfortunately, before it was to be delivered, it was hit by a lightning no? and caught fire without the fault of the debtor. So it is extinguished. The obligation of the debtor is extinguished. Number two, when the thing goes out of commerce. So this is the same as when it has no more value. No? So the debtor is not at fault here. Let's say, for example, the debtor promised to deliver uh, his two air conditioners, but these air conditioners were still using the old Freon, the Freon 
this is the chemical used in uh, cooling you know, the air conditioning unit to cool the rooms or the house. But this uh, chemical can cause uh, the thinning of the what you call this the something to do with the environment no it causes uh, locking the heat here in on earth here in earth so it has been Ill declared illegal so that kind of rain has is no longer available in the market so this is what you call goes out of commerce no it has no more value so the third is when it disappears in such a way that its existence is unknown or it cannot be recovered so Let's say, for example, the debtor promised to give a, a necklace, gold necklace, 18 karat gold. And before delivery, it was, it got lost, no? Maybe it fell on the, on the way, or he was, uh, while transporting, it fell on the way in the, river or the sea so it no longer is recoverable its existence is unknown also when there is impossibility of performance this is caused by physical impossibility meaning can no longer be performed also legal impossibility. So it's declared as illegal by the state. So in this kind of uh, situation, the thing is lost without the fault of the debtor, then the obligation is extinguished. So again, the general rule and loss of the thing due in order that it will extinguish an obligation it should be without the fault of the debtor and the thing must be a determinate or specific thing and one of the exceptions here is when the debtor is at fault so it is contrary when you say the debtor is at fault. So it does not follow the general rule. As I've said, the loss of the thing due extinguishes an obligation when there is no fault of the debtor. So when the debtor is at fault, then the loss of the thing does not extinguishes the obligation. When is the debtor at fault? When he's guilty of delay, negligence, fraud, and breach. Number two, when there is a stipulation or agreement made by the parties, meaning the creditor and the debtor, or there is a provision of law, or the nature of the obligation requires assumption of risk on the part of the debtor. So even the loss of the thing cannot be, cannot extinguish the obligation. And there, there is this number two. And number three, when the thing promised is generic. Again, generic, meaning it is identified by its species, like a car, like a dog. When you say dog, that's generic. When you say cat, that's generic. When you say a horse, that's generic. Because the principle here, genus non compare. No? 